All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another discussion of To Your Eternity. Murphy and I are going to be discussing volumes 15 and 16, probably mostly 15, uh, for various reasons. And, and <laughs> no, just for one reason. <laughs> for really one reason. Uh, Murphy, no normally, uh, I would allow you to tell me your general thoughts, but I am utterly bewildered by something that I encountered in volume 15, and I'm going to need some help. Uh, so <laughs> I <laughs> I need you to help me. Think. I mean, this just is not okay. This this is not okay. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, there are certain words that, uh, just to warn everybody ahead of time, we are not going to use certain words. I'm, we're trusting that you all can figure out what we're talking about, particularly if you did read this. Uh, but there are some very serious um issues that I have, and I think Murphy also has, with volume 15 particularly. Uh, I just want to get my general thoughts out of the way, and then Murphy, you're going to help me, uh, <laughs> because I am struggling to understand why this would even be a thing. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, my, my, my general thoughts. I really wish the series had stopped when the, uh, what was the city that they- The modern era. Yeah, I wish the whole modern era arc was just not, did not exist. Because if it had stopped, Renril, Renril was a city. If it had stopped with the, the saving of Renril, I could have said, yeah, I, 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 there were real aspects of the series that I didn't enjoy. There was some really cool philosophical exploration of, of some questions that mean a lot to me. Uh, and yes, some of the storytelling was a bit odd, but I think that's probably because I'm an old dude and <laughs> there were just certain things that I didn't get. So I really wish if it had stopped at Renreal, I could have counted this a win, uh, the series and been happy enough. It wouldn't have been, it would have been my fourth favorite manga so far, <laughs> but it's still of the four of the four, uh, but it still would have been, you know, okay. Uh, now what we encountered in volume 15, um, and 16 as well, because I I'll start with the minor stuff and then I'll, I'll get to the big thing. Uh, the minor stuff, they, uh, Fushi brought back a whole bunch of, of characters that I liked from the earlier part of the series. They're just like, they're like dust collectors. They're not doing anything. They're just, why are they there? It's almost like ruining these characters for me with the possible exception of Tonari, who is playing a very minor role in, in this whole love thing that's going on, um, which in and of itself, fine, you know, uh, but uh, Tonari's not really playing much of a role in that. And then, of course, Bon, who is essentially has become a deus ex machina, you know, and he'll come in when something needs to be saved or something needs to, you know, somebody needs a, a new outfit or some money or whatever. And, and he does then have he, the ability to arrive just as yeah. she needs more information or redirection. Yeah. Or, yeah. He kind of is like that thing that just here I am for boom. plot. Okay. Bye. The foundation will take care of it, you know, boom. And then he's gone. So I'm not enjoying even th with those two exceptions. I think that they're not really exceptions in other words. So, uh, so I'm not happy with what's happened with these, um, Beloved characters from earlier that I actually cared about, and now they're just decorations. Um, I'm not really thrilled, and this this is just a me thing. This part is with the whole middle school love triangle drama stuff. That's not my cup of tea. That I could have tolerated because I realized that's probably more a me thing. Um, but the thing that really just kind of broke me <laughs> in volume 15 is the introduction of this new character and. Hirotoshi. And, yeah, Hirotoshi and his relationship with uh, his stepsister, um, Mimori. My, mm, I forgot her name. Mimori. Oh, Mimori. Yeah, yeah. So this is presented in a way, now the character of Hirotoshi is presented in a way that, and there are certain words I cannot use, um, but he has a very unhealthy uh, attachment to, he's 30 years old. And he has a very unhealthy attachment to young girls. He has a Lolita complex. A Lolita complex. We can say that. Okay. Yeah. Um, why is this a thing? And I was I was warned, I have to say, by a viewer who was very considerate um, that there were, without being, you know, spoilery or anything, that there would be something 
and now I understand what it, what this something was. Uh, apparently, it's not just to et your eternity where this sort of thing appears. Um, that there's a a trope that is sort of, or, or is that is that the right word for this? Uh, trope is the right word. Yeah, in, okay. in manga. So I think that commenter wasn't warning you of the Lolita complex, but rather of the trope of brotherly love to a sister crossing lines to like obsession toward romance almost. Okay, well is... that's that's disturbing enough, but this is a 30-year-old <laughs> with with an uh, I think she's eleven. Uh and I don't remember how there, old she there is. There are certain scenes that are presented in clearly a uh a sexual manner. Uh so it's I was like, uh I just felt like taking a shower after reading that. Oh uh, yeah, it's yeah. So I I do okay. Do you, I sorry before I, I have yeah, a I, I'm done. Is, That's okay, it. Please, okay, please help okay. me, Murphy. <laughs> yeah. So to be clear, to again, the Lolita complex, as far as I understand it, isn't the trope that they would have been uh mm -hmm. warning you about. It's the the weird kind of brother-sister dynamic that is frequent in manga. Um Okay. I, I can't really explain it. It's not something that I have encountered a ton and it's not something that I understand. So maybe our commenters can help us with why that's a trope. Yes. But um, as far as the Lolita thing, uh, I too was very grossed out by the way it was depicted. And I do think that, I think I understand what the author was going for and I'll explain it to you and you can kind of tell me if you think okay. that I'm on the right track. Okay. Um, I just think it was terribly done. But so- the the volume opens up with making it very clear that he has quite a few magazines with a tilt towards children so you know he has this complex and it's 30 years that he's been building up he calls it his collection his life his like it's like his treasure and his dad apparently didn't care about it until he, he, brought he it does to refer him. to it as smut or something like that, along those lines right yeah i don't remember yeah, yeah. right so Right. And then he had like this weird, as soon as his stepsister came into the house, he's like, what should I have her call me, brother? And it's like this weird, he's right. tying her shoe and he has a fixation on her skirt, all that kind of stuff. So it's it's made right. very clear what his interest is. So the series has had a big tilt towards Fushi figuring out love. It's right. also had a big tilt towards obsessive, toxic, unhealthy love with... um. Hi Hiro Hiroshi? What was her name? Oh, Hayase. Hayase, thanks. Yes. With Hayase and pretty much all of her family line, even down to ones who had like honest intentions, they still had this obsessive, um, harmful love. So right. what's depicted here is him who has this obsessive, harmful attraction. Right. And then this young girl comes into his home. He has very unhealthy tendencies and thoughts towards her. Right. And then once he's left alone with her, he takes on the familial role. He starts caring for her and developing a more healthy affection for her. And yeah. then by the end, he saves her by, you know, taking the pummeling and and withstanding it. And we find out throughout the course of this volume that she's never actually experienced love. Her mom has ignored her. Her mom has preferred herself and her boyfriends over her. She's tried to get her mother's attention th through harming herself, through writing this essay, telling lies about what a great relationship they have. And nothing has worked. Her mother simply couldn't care less. So she's never experienced love. And because of that, she jumps because she doesn't see a future. Right. And with love being such a big tilt that the series is exploring her as as well as life and death and the value of life and the value of your own life her choosing not to have life because of a lack of love mm. then she doesn't want to return to her body if who she's offering to give her her body back she doesn't want it because she sees no future and hirotoshi when he's being beat up at the end he's he's promising her a future I want to give you those vacations you talked about in that essay. I want to give you that family life. I want to give you. And what he's describing to her is not an unhealthy, obsessive, damaging love. He's describing to her a familial love. And mm. that is what makes her decide, I want to live. So I think the goal, 
was to show an obsessive, unhealthy love that he was able to heal from and develop a health. Sorry, let me let me walk that back. An obsessive, unhealthy attraction. Uh huh. And he was able to be healed from that and develop a true familial love, which was healing to him and healing to her because she saw a future. Parallel that with what we've been seeing with the knockers who are inhibiting this family and turning this family into these obsessive people towards Fushi. Potentially, they'll be able to be healed from their obsessive tendencies into being able to experience true, honest, healthy love. I think that's what she was going for. I just think she did a horrible job at it. (laughs) <laughs> well, that that is, I think, the most generous possible uh, <laughs> way of explaining that whole arc. And I can see where it's kind of a redemption story for Hirotoshi in a way, if, if you look at it that way. Uh, I just don't think that's something you should play for laughs ever. Oh, I agree. We're talking about here. And it, it felt like it was being played for laughs. It was treated very time. casually. Yeah, I think I have I have many rants about the way it was handled, first of all, and foremost. So this is something you haven't experienced yet, Philip, but it's also more so with older manga. It's also a trope to have up the skirt shots of young girls. And we got a lot of that in this one. Yeah. And what makes me angry about it is that we haven't gotten any of that up to this point that I can remember. Yeah. It's not until this child is being sexualized by an adult that we start showing up her skirt constantly. Right. I mean, her flashing him made sense. She's an evil knocker, malevolent, trying, malevolent, trying to torment him. Right. But why do we see up her skirt, whether he's around or not, like 10 separate times throughout this volume? Why did you start here when this child is being looked at in this way? That's a problem to me. But then, too, I think if you're going to go this route, like, first of all, if your point is to show a toxic, unhealthy love that you heal from and learn a healthy love, pick any other way to do it. But if you're going to go this way, actually explore that. Actually show him healing more than just cooking her meals and tying her shoes. Actually work on showing him healing from this, how, and then his internal, like what he's learning, really do it. Don't just casually do it as a background point to make a different point. Like, I don't know. I hated this volume. <laughs> like I'm, I'm trying to understand the purpose of it. And I think <laughs> I've come to a healthy conclusion, but I still think the execution was poor. <laughs> yeah, well, that's as good as it gets, I think. I mean, I, I'll agree with you about the poor execution and uh, the explanation as well. You know, I uh, just think that, and I I wanted to be fair too. I was thinking, all right, I'm looking at this from my cultural lens. You know, there are certain things that are okay in some cultures that are not okay in others. But you know what? This shouldn't be okay in any culture. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, there yeah. are just certain lines. I think that I don't care really. And and if it was a different time or place, blah blah blah. No, I'm sorry. This sort of thing is just not okay. Um, yeah, and even if it, first of all, this is a recently written. Uh, yeah okay that's the thing it's 20 whatever 2020 whatever this thing is is very recent so i don't think that old tropes is an excuse i agree (laughs) right i very much agree and i also take issue with people who are like who who are like ah it's a different culture you can't you can't you westerners like no i'm allowed to criticize something i'm allowed to read something and say i don't want children looked at treated this way unless it's done with extreme care and intentionality which i would say it wasn't here or at least i can't find yeah i personally don't like the way it was done and i don't think there's anything wrong with dissecting material and having a discussion on how you feel about it this is how i feel about it agreed now literature one of the jobs of literature of every kind and manga is literature and there's some great literature in manga. the professor one of the jobs, I am actually wearing my professor clothes, so I can get the <laughs> lecture now. Um, one of the jobs of literature is to explore some very painful stuff um, and, and some awful things that people do to each other. That is true. But as you said, if you're going to do that, you need to do so in a very careful manner. Um, and I agree that this was just not that. that um, yeah. And if something is published for the public then it is open to critique and discussion and analyzation from the public. Um, I do think that the point 
was a good one and fit with the story. I just think that the subject matter that she chose to put around the point is not handled carefully or deeply enough to um, justify having it here. I would rather her have just, I'm sorry, we do have a female mangaka, am I correct? Yeah, she's- Okay, she's I'm, just, I'm just realizing that I'm not 100% positive on that, so I didn't yeah. want to be saying the wrong. I, do, I just think that her handling of it was too casual for uh for the subject matter that subject matter i think should have been treated differently personally and it appears that it's just volume 15 and the the characters in question are referred to very quickly or shown very quickly in volume 16 but it appears to be that that's it that's the whole story yeah uh, yeah yeah i think it was just meant to be further exploring of themes already established as well as um, being a launching point for us to see, oh yes, okay, toxic love healed, turned right. healthy. Right. Now we can move forward with the plotline that we've been following more closely. Right. Which I too also think that a big factor. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm kind of sick of that one too. To be honest, that Mizuha and the I am too. I, I just think this isn't the series for us, Philip. Um, <laughs> I too also think that. A big theme in this story is that our actions and our uh, the way we treat people is our true legacy. In this volume, um, uh, what's his name? Fushi decided, I want to live out the dreams of these people that I now carry their bodies. So I'm going to go do the things that I knew they wanted to do. And right. Tonari was really hurt by that. And, um, yeah. Yeah. you know, she felt like it was like a defilement of them. Their life ended. Don't act like their life is still going and you're doing them some kind of favor. Um, and I think that, I think a theme here is that what we do and how we treat people is our legacy. That's mm. what is left behind for us. That's how we affect the world. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that is also displayed in this little subplot that we got to do in volume 15, that the way he treated her, the way he valued her, the way he acted on her directly affected her life. And now that's what he's remembered as in volume 16, they make reference of him and they make reference of him as a good person, as someone who did something good because his effects on his stepsister in the end ended up being a positive and that's the legacy that he left. Right. Right. Yeah. You're in reference to, to Toshi again. Yeah. Yeah. Which, Hi Hiro Toshi. He, yeah. Sometimes he's just called Toshi, I think, for yes, sure. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I guess. I mean, it, I love to see uh, a redemption. I love to see a character who is um, kind of a loner, uh, labeled as a loser or what have you, and uh, find himself in a way that's, you know, that's, that feels, that's a feel good kind of thing. And um, mm -hmm. yay for that. Um, so <laughs> it's just, oh my goodness, you know. Um, it, I didn't like it either, Philip. <laughs> it crowded the whole experience of volumes 15 and 16 for me. Um, yeah. And I have trouble thinking about anything else in regard to the, the volumes, which I, I tried to, okay, that part is, I, I went on, I read 16 and it was like, oh, okay, let's see what we can get out of this. And, and I was bored by a lot of it, honestly. Yeah, 16 was boring. Just bored uh, because, <laughs> okay, just deja vu almost, you know, it's like, okay, uh, I wouldn't have minded something a little different in terms of the dynamic uh, between Mizuha and Fushi, but it's like, okay, we had this kind of before, didn't we? Going all the way back to Hayase. Um, and I didn't really enjoy it then, to be honest. That was not my favorite aspect of the earlier parts of the series either. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, I guess that's the thing, the obsession, the obsessive love thing is a, is that also a trope that I- uh, I don't know about that. I'm okay. still new enough that I'm not, Okay. well versed in all of the tropes because most of the most of my reading has been the same series just long form <laughs> most of I, most of the time i feel that a trope is a neutral thing that it's a tool and it can be used well yeah. and it can be used not well but i guess there are a couple tropes that i've discovered through this series that i really don't like <laughs> if 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 they're indeed tropes yeah so but yeah, yeah um 
I don't know. What else can we do? <laughs> what else can we do? Yes, I'm flipping through my screenshots right now yeah. trying to, because I know there were some things. I did really like the exploration of um, Mamori uh, okay. being inhibited by, or inhabited, inhibited, inhabited, inhabited by this knocker um, and how she was truly evil. Like she was torturing him. She was... Um, she was trying to, she tortured him physically. She was trying to torture him mentally when she, you know, flipped her skirt and she had, she's evil. Like she has this vindictive, nasty, uh, mentality. So I feel like we got a little bit closer look into the knockers through her mm -hmm. or at least mm -hmm. this one. And I also really liked near the end when she was trying to be like, look, I'm doing something good. She doesn't want her body back. I'm helping her. I'm taking this off her hands, but I'm still letting her mom have a daughter, even though, you know, this. And then when she says, I want to live right. and um, and then the knocker still refuses to leave. And mm. then it's like, OK, that was manipulation. You're a liar. Your intention isn't good. Right. And which I mean, I think it's easy to say her intention wasn't or its intention wasn't good because it was torturing someone, <laughs> right. but but uh, like literally keeping him locked up in the house, tied up. And yeah, it was bad. So that yeah. was interesting. The, and I really liked that. And I also I really find, liked. I'm oh, sorry. What else did you like? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I freeze? No, no, you're good. Okay. Um, yeah, I really liked that. And I also really liked the scene between Fushi and Tonari that I brought up a minute ago. Yeah. So yeah, th those were two good, good parts about the volume. Yeah. I, I, there is one other that I liked, uh, as well, which was, uh, the stuff with Izumi, uh, that she's the mother of Mizuha and where I thought there was some interesting stuff in terms of, um, her being willing to, re to, confront the fact and i'm not sure it's in the healthiest way necessarily that she was not the best mother but we get more backstory on her and why which is i think a good thing oh why you're talking about volume 16 now yeah most this is okay. mostly 16 yeah yes I'm, yes I'm that was great there. as well yeah that that part where we learn okay she tried to leave behind this this cult essentially the guardians and raise her daughter separately from from it and in the process pushing her daughter to be great in order to prove I did the right thing. Yeah, which you mentioned before that you didn't understand why she had this obsession with her being perfect. Yep. We got that answer in this volume. Yeah, we got that. So that's good. And that's mm -hmm. happened a few times in this series where I've been critical of something and then the next volume, oh, okay, I understand it now, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was good. I really liked getting her backstory and she still acknowledges I wasn't a good mom. What am I supposed to do yeah. with that? Yeah, so like it's I like that kind of writing when there's an acknowledgement of your failure, but also there's an understanding of where that failure came from. Yeah. 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 What about, so 16 opened up with, um, Mazumi killing her friend in cold blood and then just sitting in the blood and like swooning yeah. over Fushi. Yeah. That was, uh, um, Funa, Funa, um, who Funa, isn't actually yeah. dead because she's a knocker um as well and she claps and says congrats that's some creepy stuff there that's for sure yeah that uh, whole scene was disturbing she does a good job the mangaka does a good job of creating really disturbing scenes but then making you have to sit in it in this like creepy way <laughs> yeah. that was really good how she did that literally in this case sitting in the pool of blood yeah exactly exactly and fushi really is i mean it's it's now on page apparent that uh, Mizuma is not. Am I saying her name right, Mizuma? Uh, I think it's Mizuha. Mizuha. Yeah, Mizu Mizuha. Yeah. Mizuha. It's yeah. super clear that Mizuha is being. You know, it's the same thing as her as her male ancestor that we got in the last era. That right. uh, she's blacking out. She's losing memory. She's turning violent, but not remembering why. Which she was doing. She did. That's how she killed her mom too. But yep. Yeah. It's it's really taking her over. Yeah, we actually got an explanation of how the knockers work now, which yeah. is you can be, they, they can be within you, but dormant. Mm -hmm. So you just go on with your life and you just have a knocker in you. Uh, and then you can be half possessed or whatever, which means that's basically Mizuha, Mizuha yes. at this point, because sometimes and she- this whole herself, family line. And then sometimes the knocker takes over and she has no memory of things that happen when the knocker takes over, which is what, what happened when she killed her mother. It wasn't her, it was the knocker. Yes, yes. Um, and then, which, you know, that's good, I think, uh, 
But later we learn that she's seems to be becoming more fully integrated. Uh, and so that's the last kind is when the, well, actually, no, it's when the, the, the person's uh, phi or soul or whatever has left and the yes. knock completely taken yep. over. So that's- Yeah, then it's basically a puppeteer. Yeah. Um, and in that case, there's really no person left. It's just a body that's been- taken. Yeah, and their phi may be hanging out. And so Fushi can get their phi back to their body. Or their phi may have left, and then it's like, okay, I can kill the and destroy the knocker. I can burn it, uh, recently take its core out and burn it, or or eat it. I guess in previous volumes, or yeah. <laughs> um, and then it's just a body again. Which right, it is interesting to see him kind of struggle with that. Um, with one of the characters where it was like this, you know, this child died, and this was sad for the family, and now I'm you know, giving this child life again for the family. And it is interesting to consider grief that way where it's like, we'll just give you a replacement then, which to me seems so bastardized, you know, like it just, just speaking from my own life, thinking of losing a child yeah, and then for a replacement to come in and be like, this isn't, this isn't your child. This isn't your family member that just died. It's yeah. an, it's something else in ha puppeteering the body. But right. hey, at least you don't have to mourn. I'd be like, get out of that body. It doesn't belong to you. You right. know? But Mizuha, at a certain point, knows that's yeah. not her mother. That's a knocker. And she's, she's good like, with it. But I like my new mommy better, you know? Uh, yeah. E. Okay. Yeah. So but there's a lot issues. going on with Mizuha as well. She so. has her own issues independent of the fact It is that an she... interesting concept, though. It's a very interesting concept. Yeah, yeah. And okay, so there is a question about, and this is relevant to like AI and, and, and you know, uh, consciousness and stuff like that. So if a knocker seems to have feelings and acts like a human and smells like a human and all that, is it a human? It, does it have humanity you know that's yeah. i think something that's being explored in here to some degree i mean yes yes you're right um the knockers we know though that the way they view people is that your phi is who you are and you're just stuck inside these flesh sacks and we need to release you right and so i don't want someone with that kind of intention inhabiting a loved one that i've just lost <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, mean, I don't know our, it is interesting it's it's creepy from our perspective for sure yeah uh, speaking of creepy what did you think of the beholder and, and his uh developments as he's always holding back something like he's he he seems to have these abilities so what he does is he really uh so he takes the funa knocker and he's able to just like essentially Twist it into a flower turns it in and finds the little like core and then foosh it's gone yeah so he's lying again to fushi quite a bit uh and, and you, you got to wonder why what's going yeah, on yeah i didn't care enough to go back and reread but i am curious if when he said i don't know how to fix this if he was talking about mm. when a knocker and a phi are entangled not yeah. when a phi, uh, sorry, not when a knocker is inhabiting a body without the phi. Right. So if, if a person passes on and that body is now just a puppet, then he knows how to take that knocker out and then, right? But, but if they're tangled, maybe he doesn't know how to take that out. I don't know if it was an outright lie or if it was like a misdirection. I don't know why he's lying or misdirecting, uh, but he, it's consistent with what he's done in the past. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, and he, he has abilities that he's not telling Fushi about. The one thing that I think he was actually telling the truth about was when he earlier, and he mentions it again here, and I thought it was important back then, and I still feel it's important, though I don't understand it yet, is he says this ability to reconnect. Uh, and that's something he says, I gave you the ability to reconnect. Uh, and that is something that Fushi seems to need uh, in order to, and I don't know what it means yet entirely, but I feel like it's in something important because it's been mentioned a couple times now. And he says, yeah. I had that, but I gave it to you. And you're going to be, my, he's setting him up as his replacement, but he's mm -hmm. 
doing so in a way that seems to me like he's keeps holding back vital information, right? Yeah, and I don't know why. I don't know if he's unable to relinquish certain information or if he's just given up and he doesn't care and he's like, figure it out. Because yeah. like maybe that was what happened to him when he was put in that position. Maybe I don't know. Oh tough my parenting, goodness. Tough um, parenting. <laughs> maybe yeah. <laughs> yeah. What well, another thing though is in Fushi's journey to understand love um the the whole hayase bloodline has had this obsessive uh tilt towards love towards fushi um in M- M- can you tell me her name again the little one the little girl or no oh oh N- N- mizuha thanks in mizuha she has repeatedly presented it to him as obsession or not sorry as control she's yeah. repeatedly tried to control him then she told him you can control me i would be thrilled if you would control oh, right. me yes right yes. Yeah. and tonari on the flip side had a conversation with him in volume 16 where she said i'm so sorry for how i i lashed out at you when you right. were trying to fulfill their dreams i shouldn't have tried to control your actions i'll never try to control you again right. so if we do end up with fushi getting a romance it's going to be with Ton- Tonari, I think. Tonari, I agree entirely. Yeah. Really? Okay. I thought the same thing. I said, okay, Fushi and Tonari are going to be um, a, a, a couple at some point. Yeah, which I think it would totally make sense for Fushi to come to the end of this and be like, I don't have to have romantic love. It, familial love is appropriate for me, the immortal being with all the power in the world, right? Like that, that would make sense to me. But he can also give immortality. So who knows? Maybe he'll make Tonari... T- tonary um immortal and they'll live happily ever after as gods or maybe he'll give up his immortality in order to love tonary Ooh, i like that one yeah yeah i like that so if we actually get to the end of the series <laughs> to find out if we don't which DNF i mean this. real talk i'm cool with seeing through what we have to read which yeah. would only be one more reading session anyway right i don't know that we'll return to this <laughs> Yeah, I, I uh, yeah. Um, I don't know how many more volumes there would be anyway. I know. I vol- think two to three, three okay. tops. I know that volume twenty is coming out in December. Um, okay, then three. If nineteen's already out, then oh. we have three. No, I'm sorry. Volume nineteen is coming out in December. Oh, volume okay. Twenty is coming out next May, I think, or something. Okay, 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 okay. So yeah, depending on when it drops in December. Yeah. Um, which I don't know. Do you do you want to do the and- next? I think we should, I will commit to volumes 17 and 18. Okay. And if I hate them the way I hated these, then I'm done. Um, and if I think. Yeah. Cause you I, already own 17 and 18. I have them. I have them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I even ordered 19, which is supposed to come oh, no. in December. So, so I will commit to 17 and 18. And if I hate them, I'm done. If not, if I'm like, okay, if if they're like uh, Hirotoshi and there's something redeemable there, then uh, maybe maybe I'll continue to the end. But yeah, uh, I, I mean, it's okay to not connect with every series. There, are, we're gonna yeah. love descending stories. I feel confident, so good. <laughs> it'll be okay. Good, good, good. I hope um, so. I would like for you to explain the scene to me. Okay, which one is this? Oh yeah, when we find out she's the leader of the cult. Um, yes yeah. this is her when she's being possessed though right this is that, not okay her. so she's been the the knocker has been the leader of the cult she doesn't know about any of this yeah but now i think she's now the character mizuha is actually finding out and i think she's embracing it like she's okay with i get it. that impression too yeah yeah i didn't i don't feel like i fully un- understood <laughs> that section and how all that played out but that was the impression that i got as well that she was it was happening when she was losing her memories but she's starting to key in on it and she's like nito let's go yep 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 also I, what do you think was on that computer that got chucked into the into well, the ocean i mean it said pictures uh, right that um mizuha's mother basically wanted because she documented her entire life right like mm-hmm. she was constantly and that was part of her uh, obsession with her daughter uh was documenting everything in order to prove i guess that she had done the right thing by leaving behind the uh the cult 
Um, so I assumed just face value that that's what that was. That was, it was just reams and reams of, you know, pictures of her daughter doing this and that. And because she basically saw her daughter being okay with having a fake mommy and it broke her heart. She was like, all right, fine. Just chuck it all. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. How, you're probably I, right. Yeah. You're probably just right. Chuck it all. I'm done. And even she, she, when she left, um, did she go off to where 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 um, souls go when when they leave this, this place behind? We don't know for sure because her 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 last you know um, they were trying to talk her into Bon and Fushi were trying to talk her into hanging around and she was like I'm done and she just walks out. So yeah, that was sad. That was really sad. It was sad. It was very sad. Um, there, there's yeah. a lot in here about parenting though like parent child relationships there's a ton in here and and just the cycle you know she was raised in such a horribly unhealthy way and even though she tried to rescue her daughter from it she still repeated patterns of control and yep. you know um, that then affected her daughter and we talked about that I think in our last chat that as a parent you know, that, those are the mistakes that we sometimes make, not knowing how much to protect and hide and how much to let them see and expose them to and help them learn. And at what point, at what age are they ready for these conversations? So that was her realizing, I missed it. I didn't get it right. Yep. Yep. And she admits that. You know. Yep. Um, but I feel like she's also just mad because she realizes her daughter's okay with Yeah, I mean, she spent her life trying to protect her daughter, doing it in a way that didn't work, uh, that didn't end up being what you would, it didn't end up being the correct way. Uh, forcing perfection on your child, squeezing all individual individuality and self-expression out of them, that's not the way. But it was an act of love. So she probably might have hoped that her daughter could have understood where she was coming from yeah. at the very least. She didn't, um, which I mean, uh, Mizuha has displayed to us over and over again, how incredibly selfish she is. So it's not surprising that. Yeah. yeah. Um, two more interesting things that happened though, near the end is that one boy whose name I've forgotten or rather never bothered to learn, um, learned how to communicate with Izzy. Oh yes. I was going to bring that up. with Itty. Itty, itty. Uh, yep. He learned how to make his own clay pot and told her what his favorite food was, which I thought was pretty interesting and also great because it means that Itty doesn't have to be so isolated. Yes. Yeah. I like that. And he, he did it as a way to uh, communicate with Fushi without the knockers knowing. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's Yuki. Uh, yes. And I'm sure that's going to be a very relevant plot point. So I want to make sure that we mention that. Um, also, I guess I said two things, but three, I'll mention another, probably an important plot point here is that, um, I killed Mizuha. I don't know why I have such a hard time remembering her name. Mizuha did kiss Hana, Hannah, Hannah. Oh, so, yes. You would call yeah. that. Right? What's that? Didn't you call that one? Didn't you think that? Same I knew that Hana had a crush on her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I didn't expect her to do anything about it, but that's probably just showing her being very confused and, you know, probably manipulative, trying to like keep her friend close to her by right. manip manipulating her love, uh, her feelings. And yeah. then we see Fushi kind of distancing himself from Mizuha when he gets this little dirt ball and he tries to give it to her as a gift to help her feel better. And she nice. just smashes it on the ground and he just walks away and gives it to Marsh. And she's so happy. Wow, look at him. It's so shiny yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's him seeing love from his family as opposed to from this person who's showing him a more selfish one-sided obsessive kind of love yeah we saw that in the earlier arc as well where fushi's trying to do everything by himself and then realizes he can't and he needs his friends his family um so he's returned to his family and that's important. yeah i also like how he impersonates uh, Funa and tries to get oh everybody, yeah he's so tries sweet. to get everybody to like Mizuha um, again wrong choice in how you did it but you right, know you right. tried yeah yeah he does so very naively um, yeah you know and it, it kind of works too I guess if, if Mizuha wants it to work you know right because a lot of the kids uh seem to come around um and and initially they're like uh you know but then they're like well okay you know do you have any left 
Yeah. I, I actually do want one. Yeah. yeah. And then, but then that also makes that the one that she gave to Hannah or Hannah, I'm not sure how I should pronounce her name, um, far less special. And when that's confronted and then she sees, I think she saw that she was being manipulated and played with, I which think... is why her response wasn't positive. Right. Right. Yeah. That was kind of. So yeah, our love triangle has, it. it our triangle turned more into a square, which yeah. has now gone out to an octagon now that we have tonari kind of <laughs> yeah. like we're we're going wide <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah who knows where things will end up here but uh i guess we'll find out in episodes yeah because that that kiss from uh, mizuha to hana it seems more manipulative than anything else not yeah. genuine right Definitely. Well, even Hana was like, you have feelings for Fushi. And she's like, no, Fushi has feelings for me. And like, but yeah. I think she very, I think she could tell that it was all different motives. Right. Yeah. I'm kind of wondering what her motive is for doing that to Hana at that point. Yeah. I think it's the same motive as, um, oh gosh, I wrote down the names and then I lost the paper I wrote them on. Mamori, the little girl. Yeah when she flipped her skirt to be like an emotional control. I think it was the same thing. So she, she on some level knew that Hana had a crush on her. Oh yeah. I think, well, I think she knows that everybody does like she could, she could go to just about anybody and they would, they would care. I mean, we even had that scene when Fushi was confronting the one girl and he like had his arm out trying to, trying to get close and talk to her. And then, um, mm, Miz, Miz, Mizuha and yeah. that boy walked past and it was like this thing you know I think like everybody likes her and she knows it and she can play with it if she wants to right yeah okay well at least Memori gets a, a sort of happy ending there she is smiling and at the end I guess right she's determined to make it fun right even though it's not she's gonna try you know yeah <sighs> <laughs> how you feeling philip i don't know murphy i don't know i'm gonna try to <laughs> i'm gonna try we'll do one more week of this we'll do yes. one more and yeah. i mean that's all we have anyway. that's all we have right now anyway so yeah, yeah. and i i don't want to just quit when there's just two more volumes same especially because there are people that are reading along with us and while we may not be the most exciting discussion discussion partners anymore <laughs> <laughs> still let's like let's see it through to the end for the people that are that are yes. reading along for the loyal people who are reading along with us and <laughs> I'm, I'm curious please leave comments if if you have w some way of explaining what we discussed earlier or if you were just as disturbed by it um let us know you know but yeah certain words you're not allowed to use i guess so be careful what you say oh yeah if, if you are going to comment just be mindful that youtube will hide your comment if you say certain words so just find a way to talk around it like we did yeah so it's not me uh, censoring you if your comment yeah. appears. Yeah, Philip will not be deleting comments. <laughs> yeah, I'm not deleting comments. Um, so, yeah. Well, thank you, Murphy. I do appreciate you, uh, as always, helping me out here. Uh, it was a tricky one. It was the trickiest one we've had, I think. Yeah. And I'm also, as we're speaking to our commenters, I'm also not a pro on manga tropes. So I'm giving the best information I have. But if anyone has better more accurate information on tropes please please correct me i will not be offended i have a lot to learn in regards to this stuff as well so yeah well i'm excited to see what people say yeah well as i said you know tropes are tools uh, there are some tropes though that i think at a certain point in a culture you want to move on from um so just putting yeah. that out there you know yeah you know, so but thank you so much murphy thank you everybody for listening to us <laughs> What is one fun our, conversation today? A different conversation this time, <laughs> uh, I think. Uh, but we we did, I think, squeeze as much as we could from this, uh, given the circumstances. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. I will see you in two weeks. And, all right, see you. Uh, all right, everybody. Until next time. <laughs>